Let's start with my pre-pubescent self. So before I got my period and all that, I was always super skinny. I was like a rake. I was like half the size I am now. I could eat anything. I had beautiful skin. You know, people would always comment how nice my skin was. Everything was just on point, you know. In year 10, I got my period and that's sort of when things started to change. Once I had my period for around six months, my skin started to break out. And that was not normal for me because like I said, before my period I had perfect skin. I didn't even know what a pimple was. It was sort of um, on my forehead a little bit and on my cheeks. I, at the time I thought it was really bad. Looking back now, it was just sort of on the surface sort of pimples. But to me, I had never had skin like that and both my sister's skin were perfect and I just didn't know what to do. So at that time, I did try to start to eat a little bit healthy, but at the end of the day, I was in year 10, I didn't care. I was like, I'm just gonna go on the pill and make my skin good. The first pill I got prescribed in year 10 was a pill called Diane. Now, I got put on Diane, not even a month after, I blew up. I It was probably the biggest I've ever been. Before my period, I was around 45, and then once I was on Diane, I was about 56. So I had gained, you know, over 10 kilos and it was just like, I didn't even know who I was anymore. So I was on Diane, it didn't help my skin and it just made me fat. So I was like, this sucks. So I went back to the doctor and I pretty much said, hey, this pill isn't working for me. She prescribed me Yasmin. So Yasmin is sort of the same as Yaz and it's apparently the only pill that helps your skin. So at that time I didn't really know I guess I knew sort of the side effects of the pill, but I didn't care. I just wanted good skin. I went on Yasmin and it took about four to five months, I guess, and my skin cleared up like crazy. I lost a tiny bit of weight, but I was still around 55 kilos, which normally for anyone else, that's um, a good weight, I guess, but I am supposed to be pretty small. So I thought I was fine, but looking back, I was probably a little bit heavier than I should have been. I was on the pill for year 10, 11, 12, and then the first year out of school. So I was on Yasmin for four years. And throughout that whole time, my skin was really good. I could pretty much use whatever on my skin and it would be fine. Um, nothing would really break me out. So then in 2012, I got really into health and fitness and that's when I first started to make my Instagram. So I sort of looked at my life and I was like, I would eat white bread for every meal. I had hardly had any vegetables, I hated vegetables. I was just really unhealthy. So I decided to sort of change my life around and I started eating clean and just educating myself on how to live a healthy lifestyle. So I went off the pill and I thought, oh, well, now that I'm older, my hormones would have balanced out by themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in three months, I have never seen my skin how it was at that, at that point. I thought my skin was bad when I first got my period, that was nothing compared to this. It was like my body was getting revenge on me. My skin was so inflamed. I didn't even have pimples. I had full on acne and it was bright red and inflamed and it looked angry. I had small sort of on the surface pimples on my forehead, but I didn't even care about them. It was my cheeks. So my cheeks had like under the skin cystic pimples. They would hurt. They were red, they were inflamed. No matter how much makeup I would put on, it looked terrible. So once I had been off it for around five months and my skin had gotten bad, I also started to lose my hair. And my ponytail, when I first went off the pill, my ponytail was literally that. That was my whole pony. And I would brush my hair in the shower and chunks of it would fall out, like chunks. And I was on hair, skin and nail tablets. And at that point I changed to a high fat diet, lots of fish and nuts and Nothing fixed it. It wasn't diet. My diet was fine. Um, my naturopath said my diet was on point. They didn't know why I was losing hair, why I had this bad acne, why I had bad cellulite, why I couldn't lose weight. With my diet and the amount that I exercised, I should have been shredded. That's what every doctor said to me, but my body just wasn't changing. I did oil cleansing. I did acupuncture, Chinese herbs like Vitex, high fat diet, vegan diet, raw vegan diet, the alkaline diet, face masks, paleo, Estro block. Not thinking about it because stressing makes your acne worse. And if you don't stress, it will go away. Candida diet, naturopaths and various doctors. Nothing would fix my acne. So I was off the pill for two years at this point, I think, 2009, Yes, I was off the pill for two years. So at this point, my skin ruled my life. Every morning I'd wake up, the first thing I would do was this, to see if my acne had gone away. As soon as I woke up, it's the first thing I thought of. Literally everything I did in the day revolved around my skin. 
I would stress about what to eat for breakfast because if I have cacao, even though it's healthy, it's an inflammatory food, so it will inflame my skin. Um, I didn't want to eat eggs because eggs were supposed to make your skin bad. I remember going to this dessert place for, for my mum's birthday and I just sat there and cried and I felt so bad because I ruined her birthday. Everything I would look at on the menu, I knew I had researched in some way it would break me out and I just sat there crying and I didn't eat because I was so scared that something would break me out. And I, I didn't even really care that much about my body back then. I said I would rather be obese or whatever and have good skin because there was nothing I could do that would make my skin good and at the end of the day I was I was actually pretty depressed and you know I would laugh with my friends and be like oh it's fine like it's just my skin but I don't think any of my friends had any idea how depressed I really was. The only people who knew the extent of my emotions and my acne was Mitch, my sisters and my parents. Some days I wouldn't even want to go to work and driving to work I would just cry. I'd be crying on the way to work and then I would have to sit in the car and reapply my makeup and go into work and pretend I was fine. I didn't wear lipstick because I thought that that would draw attention to my face and I didn't want anyone looking at my face. I love wearing my hair slick and for a whole year I pretty much didn't wear my hair slick because I didn't want to expose all of my face. And you know, my friends, they were trying to be really supportive and helpful and they would say, oh, don't worry, Sarah, you can't even tell. Like, if you didn't say anything, I wouldn't have noticed. Saying that doesn't really help. And I know my friends were just trying to, you know, make me feel better, but it didn't matter what anyone said. I knew it was there and I thought that everyone was looking at it. And I would hate when my friends would come into work and say, oh hey, like I didn't know you were working today. I just would wanna hide. I'd wanna say, don't look at me. That went on for two years and I was depressed. Every night I would stay up till around 3 a.m. and just be on Google researching things because at that point I was in the mindset that no one was gonna help me. If I was just gonna lie around and do nothing, my skin would get worse, so I've just gotta help myself. Because every doctor I went to, even though they would give me sort of the same prognosis, they wouldn't fix it. So this Chinese doctor said, oh, I'm gonna give you acupuncture and these herbs and they'll fix your skin. And it inflamed me more. It made it worse. I got acne all over my chest and all over my stomach for my birthday. So for my birthday, I had this crop top. I couldn't even wear it because I had acne everywhere. So I would say that was one of the worst times in my life. And like I said, if you haven't had acne, you're probably looking at me going, oh, you're so vain and you're so easily stressed out and easily sad. There's so many worse problems you could have. Yeah, there is. But like I said, if you haven't had severe acne you can't relate it is i can't even explain it i when i would talk to people i wouldn't even look at them i'd be like yeah um yeah that's cool i'll, I'll see you tomorrow cool so at that point i was over it i was like what's the point of being so healthy and natural if i'm depressed and i look disgusting that's sort of what i was thinking so at that point it was either the pill or roaccutane now i did lots of research on Roaccutane and I'm a summer baby. I love the sun, I love the beach and it was coming into summer and if you go on Roaccutane you're not supposed to go in the sun. So I was like that's just unrealistic to me, I have to be at the beach, it's the only thing that makes me happy so I didn't go on Roaccutane. I also did more research into it and I wasn't really that keen on it. It's a bit of an unknown drug, they don't really know what the repercussions will be when you're older so anyway the research I did on it I didn't really like it but Heaps of my friends have been on it and I understand why people go on it. I was over it, I went back on the pill, I went back on Yasmin. It took a little bit longer to fix my skin because it was so severe and it was so inflamed. But it took around four to five months for me to see an improvement. Um, so once I'd been on it for five months, my skin was clear and beautiful again. So I was on the pill for a year. Didn't have any bad side effects, my period got to become regular again. So this was in 2000 and. 14, so this is quite recently. My doctor at that time sort of knew who I was and what I was about and you know she knew about my Instagram and she was just like, why are you doing this? This is against everything you believe in. You know, you're this natural holistic person and you're on the pill, like that's a bit hypocritical. And I was like, yes, I know, but I'm depressed. Like whatever, I'd rather be happy. Then there was this big epidemic about my pill. So Yasmin, they started coming out with all of these stories about people who had died from using it. They had blood clots, um, they had strokes. I did know all of those side effects but I was so desperate to you know not be depressed, don't have bad skin anymore, I just copped it. I'm always one to say listen to your body. If you're hungry, eat. If you're tired, sleep. If you have a headache, drink water. Listen to your body. I was sort of thinking about that and I was like this is my body trying to tell me that something isn't right. So when I'm not on the pill, I have bad skin, my hair falls out, 
I have sort of a toxic body in the way that I have cellulite and I'm not shifting weight. It was just sort of irresponsible of me to ignore those signs and just mask it and go on the pill. The last thing I want is my hormones are out of whack. They're showing me all these signs that they're out of whack and I'm ignoring it. So imagine, you know, when I'm older and I try to have kids and my hormones are so out of whack that I can't even get pregnant. I made this decision to finally find out what's going on with my body, what's wrong. I want to get my hormones in check, balanced naturally. So my body was telling me something and I decided to go off the pill. I've been off the pill now for a little over a month. This time, instead of trying to do it by myself and jumping from acupuncturist, from naturopath to Chinese doctor, I found someone that I'm quite happy with. He is a trained naturopath, but he's also done this holistic doctor thing. I don't know, I forget. It's like all written in his office. I liked that, you know, I would tell him my symptoms and how I was feeling. He agreed with everything I thought. He was like, yep, it's definitely your hormones. Your hormones totally sound out of whack. But what I liked even more is that he actually ran tests he made me do a saliva test, he did like a body composition test instead of just saying, oh, it's your liver that's wrong. You know, he wanted to find out for sure what was going on. I went to the snow and I came back and he had all my test results. Let me get them for you. I won't go too in-depth because it will be a bit confusing, but I did an androgen test. I am on the high side, so I'm a stressor. So it says in the morning I'm good and then in the afternoon I'm stressing too much, blah, blah, blah. My cortisol levels and my androgen levels are too high. My body is producing too much cortisol, too much of my stress hormone. And I've always known that, well, I've always thought that, but it was good to have it in documentation and from my saliva tests. But the really interesting thing <clears throat> is he tested my testosterone levels. For a healthy testosterone range, I should be that green part just there. That's me. That dot there? That's my testosterone levels. So he said, I'm not even on the charts. He said, if I was a teenage boy, that would be too high. Yeah, that just shows you how out of whack my hormones are. I, I guess I'm sort of getting answers to my problems. This is maybe why I'm breaking out. An excess in testosterone and an excess in cortisol and androgens is going to break you out. Look it up. So I actually got my period yesterday. So that's good. Since I've been off my pill, I've had two periods. So hopefully I keep getting them regularly and 21 days after my cycle, I've got to do a urine test and he's going to test my progesterone and estrogen levels to see how they're balancing. But for now, this is what we're doing to target my hormones, thus targeting my skin. So for breakfast and dinner, I'm taking this herbal supplement for my testosterone levels to try and balance them out. So I have to take that every breakfast and dinner. It tastes like crap, but gotta do what you gotta do. Every morning, I take this, I don't really know how to say it. Serifos, serifos. This is for my cortisol levels and this is so my brain is sending appropriate messages to my cortisol levels so they're not gonna to be too high. So it's just gonna hopefully de-stress me. And then he thinks I have an insulin resistance problem which can come from unbalanced hormones and that's why I can't lose weight and that's why I'm heavier than I am even though I have a good diet. So I'm on glucose support and I just have that three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner with my meals, just to help um, my insulin resistance in my body. Then every night I have to take two magnesiums. Again, that helps chill me out and relaxes my body and decreases my cortisol levels. And then I take a fish oil and some vitamin C. So he said, oh, and I have to take a B complex. I forgot to take that today. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Um, like I said, I've got to go back and talk to him about my estrogen and progesterone levels. My skin is still smooth. Like I said, I've been off it for a month. Um, my hair is thinned a tiny bit, but that's fine. As you guys know, I try to make my channel as real and candid as possible. I don't pretend to be this perfect, healthy, fit girl. I have issues too, obviously. I remember when I was going through my really bad hormonal acne stage, I would binge watch these kind of YouTubes. I'm really sorry if this video went for a really long time, but I had a lot to say. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I'm more than happy to comment or, you know, follow me on Instagram, send me a comment on my Instagram because this is something I'm really passionate about. I hope you all liked this video and I hope it helped you in any way and I hope I haven't forgotten anything, I probably have. At the end of the day, just think, there's always something you can do. It's not the end of the road, you know. I know I've got to those points where I thought there was nothing I could do for my acne and I was gonna be hashtag acne girl forever. But at the moment, I'm clear. So let's, fingers crossed, touch wood that it stays like that. Have an awesome day, guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.